There are many ways to modulate the visibility of objects, faces, and edges in SketchUp, and learning these different ways is an essential skill, especially as you move forward with more and more complex models. The most obvious way to hide something is to select it and press H. You can also do this from a menu. You can select something, go up to the Edit menu, and choose Hide. Command E is hardwired on the Mac to this shortcut. You can also go up here and say unhide the last, but I find that this particular item is kind of buggy on the Mac. It actually unhid all the objects. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I prefer just to use the shortcuts H to hide and Shift H to unhide all. I can select this face and hide it by pressing H just the same. If I hide this edge, the faces that are defined from it remain. So it's important to understand that the visibility of something isn't actually affecting the model. It's merely displaying it or hiding it so that you can get to work and see what you're doing. I'll press Shift H to unhide all. So let me go ahead and hide these three objects, two groups and one component. If you go up to the Edit menu, you'll see there's a choice here under Unhide Selected. And you might wonder, how in the world can I unhide something if I can't even see it? Well, there are two ways to do this. You can go to the View menu and show the hidden geometry. And then you can actually select something and unhide it in this fashion. Alternatively, let me toggle the hidden geometry off. You can use the Outliner. The Outliner shows the contextual modeling structures in the model, namely components represented by these symbols, and groups represented here. Typically groups don't have a name, although it is possible to name them in Entity Info, and components must have a name, as indicated by these brackets. The objects that are hidden are grayed out, so I could select this component and then unhide it. I could also right-click a hidden group or component get the context menu and then choose unhide directly from the outliner. Incidentally, the outliner has disclosure triangles which reveal nested groups and components. Here in this case we have a component which is the letter G nested inside this group. This pentagon object is not represented in the outliner at all because it's not grouped nor is it a component. I'll press shift H to unhide all. Now let's talk about the differences in visibility between groups and components. If I double click on the group, everything else is hidden temporarily while I work on the group. And that's happening because of a certain setting in Model Info. Let's take a look. Right here under Components, we have this checked. This is hiding the rest of the model. If I uncheck that, everything else is faded, and I can control how much with this slider. It's a good idea to fade it at least a little bit so you can tell the difference between what you're editing and the rest of the model. And you can toggle this by pressing Shift G. Let's try it. Shift G hides the rest of the model. Shift G again shows everything faded. I'll double click out here to close the group. There's a difference with components. I'll double click on the component for editing. Again, everything else is faded but this component isn't faded as much. I'll press Shift-G to hide everything else. Notice that this instance of the component remains visible. If I want to entirely hide that component, I can press Ctrl-G, and that is equivalent to toggling this checkbox in Model Info. It fades similar components, either hiding or fading. So we have quite a plethora of settings modulating the visibility of objects. So just to recap, you have Shift-G to hide the rest of the model. Control-G hides similar components. H is for hide. Shift-H is for unhide all. There's a Ruby script I have loaded called Hide All by Todd Birch. And it's quite useful. It's similar to functionality that I'm used to in 3ds Max. I'll select an object and press Option Shift H. It hides the unselected. In other words, it lets me focus on my selection and work on it without the distraction of everything else and their structures. Then I can just press Shift H to get everything back. There's another good script by Todd Birch called Hide Tool, 
and it allows you to hide things by clicking. When you install the script, it's located at the bottom of the Edit menu. It's called Left Click Hide, and it needs no further description. Just a time saver. Rounding all this out are a couple of modes you've seen before, but I'll just mention them here in this video for completeness. I'll unhide all by pressing Shift H. Then I'll press X to enter X-ray mode. Here, I can actually see through objects, so I can select edges which are obscured by faces. I'll press X again to toggle back into the normal mode. I'll double-click on the group to enter this for editing, and then I'll display the hidden geometry within this group. These edges are softened, so they appear as dashed lines in this mode. I can pull them back and make them visible by using the eraser tool with Shift Option held down. I'll just drag over these edges and make them visible again. So that completes a long list of ways you can modulate visibility. There's one other method which employs layers, and you'll learn about that next.